Meat, cotton candy. What could possibly go wrong? We're making meat. Roll out our meat. We're gonna, We're gonna boil, boil our filet mignon. I'm gonna light it up. We've reached jam mode. I lived in China for seven years and they have a snack made out of pork that literally has the exact same texture as cotton candy and it's absolutely delicious. We'll be attempting to recreate this pork cotton candy and take it to the next level by using the same process with homemade cold smoked salmon and with what some people call the king of all steaks, the filet mignon. But in the name of science, let's get started. First things first, we gotta find some of this pork cotton candy and I think I know the perfect spot. It's the road. And we've made it to the Hong Kong supermarket. You know it's real when they have the fruits and vegetables right outside. We got some durian. These things literally taste and smell like <laughs> but I love them. Got our light soy sauce. I cannot tell you how much time I spend in China at Chinese meat sections. This place is awesome. Shiju Roma. Yao Liang Jin. So a lot of people speak Cantonese in Hong Kong. I speak Mandarin. I think you understood me though. Hey, ni hao. Ro Song Mail Ma. Yeah, I owe too. Ha. Over there. Sure, We have finally found our pork cotton candy. As you can see, this stuff literally has the consistency of cotton candy. It's super light, but this is all pork. We got everything we need. Let's get back to the kitchen. <laughs> this right here is our pork cotton candy and just check out the texture of this stuff. It's most commonly known as pork floss, but me and my buddies always called it pork cotton candy. It is just wild. I mean, it's literally like hair. Time to figure out if I can taste the difference between real cotton candy and pork cotton candy. We got our taste tester tie. My sister said she got a wild cotton candy flavor, so I don't know how I feel about this. Like, what could this possibly be? Number one. 1000% the pork cotton candy. Literally brings me back to China. Number two. Oh, it's spicy. Oh, what the hell is that? Oh God, that is not good. I 1000% prefer the pork cotton candy. It almost has like a dense texture as you bite into it. Kind of similar to beef jerky. It's a little bit salty. Definitely some soy sauce, probably MSG in there. And it's commonly found on like pork buns. Some people eat it on rice. And now it's time to make our own. First things first, we need our pork tenderloin. Now, some people don't know this, but this is actually the exact same cut as the filet mignon on a cow, which means it's extremely lean, tender, and perfect for making cotton candy. Because we want this extremely lean, we're gonna remove as much silver skin and fat as possible. A good tip when removing silver skin, go to the middle, slide your knife in, that way it's all connected, point your knife upwards, and you can just slide it out. Next, slice up the pork tenderloin into roughly about an inch, maybe a little bit smaller, but just little chunks and try to keep them roughly the same size. We're left with these perfect medallions of pork. You can see just how lean that is. We're gonna set this pork aside and work on that steak. This here is a beef tenderloin, commonly known as the filet mignon. Once again, an extremely lean cut of beef and just absolutely gorgeous. Meat floss or cotton candy is commonly used with pork. I've never seen it done with beef, so honestly, I have no idea if this is even gonna work. Once again, just gonna trim up the fat. We want this really super lean. Now just slicing in half once and taking our slices. For this step, we'll need to boil some water. We'll drop in our pork. Now that it's turned white in color, we're gonna remove and strain our pork. Boiling meat is actually pretty common in Chinese cooking. I'm pretty sure it's to remove the impurities. And now we're gonna do something which I believe is actually illegal in America. Unfortunately, we're gonna boil our filet mignon. And once again, once the meat has turned white, I'm gonna remove it. I cleaned the pot, now we have some brand new water. We're gonna re-add the pork. And now for the simmering step, we're gonna add some flavor. We have some nice slices of ginger, some light soy sauce, some citron peppercorns. Absolutely love these things. And this right here is rock sugar. Very common in Chinese cooking, but it looks super cool. Almost like a crystal. We're gonna let this simmer for about an hour and a half and do the exact same thing with the filet. In with that steak, once again with that ginger, soy sauce, the peppercorns, and that sugar crystal. Get that sugar dissolved and simmer for an hour and a half. 
It has been an hour and a half, which means we should be ready for the next step. But as you can see, most of the liquid is gone. And while it might not necessarily look that good, I have to say at this point, it actually smells incredible. Time to dry off our meat on a paper towel. And this is the texture we're currently working with. Definitely dry on the inside, but I think that's what we want. Gotta go for a quick bite. It is dry for sure. That flavor profile is incredible. And here's that beef. Apparently the next step here is to roll out our meat. I can confidently say this is the first time I've done this. <laughs> oh man, it's actually kind of working. They say go as thin as we can. You can't tell me this doesn't look delicious. This is just bizarre. Boil, then roll it out like it's pizza dough. I feel like I'm at a bakery right now. And now we're gonna shred it up with our hands into tiny little pieces. But we're slowly getting closer and closer to our pork cotton candy. And this pork has been through a lot and it still has to keep cooking after this. We have our mound of essentially pork sawdust. It's completely dry, super crazy texture. But let's move on to that steak. Once again, time to roll it out. Nothing to see here. Just rolling out my filet mignons. I feel like if you're on a diet, this is the perfect technique. You get way more meat out of one piece. And time to break it up. Found that this technique kind of works, like let it rub against each other. Believe it or not, the next device we'll need is a bread maker. It's ironic how I buy a bread maker. I can guarantee we are not making any bread in this at any time ever. We're making meat. I'll start with the pork and I'll add it all in there. Eh, I'm actually gonna do half. In she goes. I have it set to the jam setting, so an hour and 20 minutes. Here we go. And with our second bread maker, we'll do the beef. I'll be honest, at first I was a little bit concerned here. We're using the jam setting, which means it should be spinning, which it just started doing. And essentially what's happening is it's slowly cooking and dehydrating. We've reached jam mode. We have our meat in the bread maker, time for salmon. This here is a piece of Alaskan coho salmon. And believe it or not, I actually caught this fish myself. It's a pretty successful day. It's been sitting in my freezer for about six months. It is finally time to cook it and we're turning it into cotton candy. We'll start by seasoning with a bit of barbecue rub, completely different flavor profile than the other ones. So we'll see how this goes. Before going through the whole process to make this, I'm actually gonna try cold smoking it. Now I don't have any little tiny wood chips. So we're gonna start with this giant hunk of apple wood. This is quite possibly the worst way to abuse a knife, but I'm just trying to whittle it down and get some sawdust. This should be pretty much good. Time to make our homemade cold smoking device. Cold smoking is very different than hot smoking, which is what you'll traditionally do on a grill. And I'll show you how I do it. We've elevated our salmon for airflow. Now we're gonna throw our little cold smoking device on top and we'll insert the tube, add in our apple wood chips. Now this part might be familiar to some of you out there. We're gonna light it up. So raw proteins actually absorb smoke extremely well. Because we have the heat source separated from the actual salmon, it's not cooking whatsoever, hence the name cold smoking. It's been about 20 minutes, and as you can see, virtually all the smoke is gone. Oh, but it has a super nice smoky flavor. Let's keep going. But next, we're gonna remove the skin. Just doing my best to not slice through too much meat. Fortunately, we are gonna be kind of chopping this up later, so it doesn't the shape isn't super important. Just don't wanna waste any of this beautiful salmon. All right, now that I've significantly butchered our fish, let's keep, let's keep on going. Just slice this up into some pieces. Once again, we have some boiling water and just adding in the salmon. The fish cotton candy is a completely different process than the meat ones, and it's all done in the pan. But I'm once again gonna add in some ginger and just a splash of soy sauce. While this water is evaporating, I'm actually gonna just break up the salmon into little pieces. The water is pretty much fully evaporated at this point. Now we're gonna hit it with some oil. From here, we're gonna slowly let it dry out over extremely low heat. We've let this continue cooking on super low heat and check this stuff out. Pretty much all the moisture is gone at this point. And it's turned into this incredible looking almost powder, but this is exactly what I was hoping for. It is wild to think that this was literally a filet of salmon at one point. It's been about an hour in the bread maker, which means the rest of our cotton candy should be done. 
Still super warm to the touch. It's almost like jerky in a way, but a lot lighter. Honestly, the texture is a little less fluffy than the salmon, but overall pretty happy with it. Next up, the beef. Once again, gonna be honest here, I feel like the quality's kinda going lower and lower as we do this. This one's a bit too dry, it feels, but still kinda has that, that similar consistency. But what matters most is how it tastes. And to plate, going with an absolutely wild move of going pork cotton candy on top of the pork, beef cotton candy on top of our filet mignon, and topping salmon with salmon cotton candy. Tibby is aware it's time to eat. I think he's most excited about the salmon one. It just always happens every time I'm doing the taste test. I'm gonna start here with the pork. I'm going straight pork cotton candy. I gotta be completely honest with you guys. My version of the pork cotton candy is 10 times worse than the store-bought. I don't know what happened. Flavor-wise, it's phenomenal, but the texture, just a little too dry and stringy. But let's move on to the beef. Flavor is amazing. Get that sweetness, a little bit of the Sichuan kick. But once again, the texture is just not ideal. Let's move on to the salmon, which I have the highest hopes for out of the three. This is just so much fluffier. Let's see. You actually still get the smoke. Wow. That salmon one is easily the best by far. Clearly, we still have some work to do when it comes to pork and beef, cotton candy. But either way, I really hope you guys learned something and enjoyed the video. If you are still watching, please make sure you're subscribed. Also like the video. It does help me out quite a bit. And I'll see you next time.